Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on static electricity. The topic of this video is the electric field intensity. Here's what we wish to understand. What are the mathematical equations associated with the electric field intensity and how do you determine the direction of the electric field vector? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed the electric field concept. You'll find links to the video in this description section of this one. Here's what we said in that video. Charged objects alter the electrical properties of the space that surrounds them by creating an electric field that permeates outwards into that space. Other charged objects that enter that space experience the effect of the electric field. We think of it like this. You have a charged object. It creates an electric field, and that electric field affects other charged objects. As an analogy, think of the stinky field created by a poopy diaper. A poopy diaper creates a stinky field that permeates outwards and affects all detectors of stink that are in the surrounding space. It's a way that the diaper can exert an action at a distance upon other detectors of stink. Let's for a moment suppose that we have a negatively charged Van de Graaff generator and it's creating an electric field. We call this the source charge. It's the object that's creating an electric field. And to detect this electric field, we would need some sort of detector, usually a charged object that we call the test charge. It could be, for instance, simply a negatively charged balloon that responds to the force of the source. We call this balloon the test charge it's detecting the electric field. And at any given location, the strength of the electric field would be measured by measuring the amount of force that the test charge experiences and dividing it by the quantity of charge on the test charge. In terms of an equation, we would define electric field this way. It's the force on the test charge divided by the quantity of charge on the test charge. In terms of symbols, that would be E for electric field equal F for the force on the test charge divided by lowercase q with the subscript test for the quantity of charge on the test charge. The units on electric field would be force units divided by charge units. That would be a newton divided by a coulomb, or abbreviated an N per C. Don't be fooled. The electric field does not depend upon the quantity of charge on the test charge. Here's what I mean. Just because we calculate electric field as the ratio of F per little q does not mean that changing the quantity of charge on the test charge will change the left side of the equation. The fact is, if you were to change the denominator on the right side of the equation, what it would affect is the numerator on the right side of the equation. Doubling the quantity of charge on the test charge doubles the force, and the ratio of force per q remains the same. It works for other multiplying factors as well, like tripling the denominator on the right side, triples the numerator on the right side, and the overall ratio of numerator to denominator remains the same, such that the quantity of charge on the test charge does not affect the electric field value. To fully understand it, you need to understand Coulomb's law of force, which states that the force between the source charge and the test charge depends upon the Q of the source, the Q of the test charge, and the distance squared that separates them. And now if you look at this equation, what you'll notice is that if you were to double the Q of the test charge, you would double the force, but the ratio of force per test charge would remain the same value. The electric field strength at any given location depends upon two variables, the quantity of charge upon the source and the distance that this location is located from the center of the source charge. Let's see if we can develop an equation that relates the electric field to these two variables that affect its strength. Now to begin, we'll start with the equation that the electric field is the force per quantity of charge on the test charge. And then for the numerator of this equation, we're going to use Coulomb's law, which states that the electrical force between the source charge and the test charge is the product of these two charges multiplied by the Coulomb law constant and divided by the separation distance squared. Now I'm going to take all of this stuff for the force and put it into the numerator of my first equation. And when I do, it looks like this. Now I notice that there's two locations where we have Q of the test charge 
it's in the numerator, and it's in the denominator. So I'll cross it out and then simplify my equation so that it takes this form. Now I have an equation for electric field expressed in terms of the two variables that affect the strength of the electric field. In this equation, K is the Coulomb law constant. Its value is 9 times 10 to the 9th newtons times meter squared per Coulomb squared. Q source is the quantity of charge on the source and D is the separation distance from the center of the source to a particular location. As this equation suggests, there's an inverse square relationship between the electric field strength and the separation distance from a location to the center of the source charge. The diagram depicts a source charge with a radius of r, and four additional locations are shown that are twice as far, three times as far, four times as far, and five times as far from the center of the source as the surface of the source is. Let's suppose for a moment that the electric field strength on the surface of this source charge is 800,000 newtons per coulomb. If that's the case, we could if that's the case, we could say that the electric field at the other locations are given by the values in this table. We will note the inverse square relationship if we compare the various rows of the table to the first row. For instance, if we look at the second row, that separation distance is two times further away, and the electric field strength is one-fourth as big at that location. If we look at the third row, it's three times the separation distance in an electric field value that is one-ninth as large. If we look at the fourth row, that's four times the separation distance in an electric field strength that's one-sixteenth as much. And finally, the last row of the table has a separation distance that's five times bigger than the first row and an electric field strength that is one-twenty-fifth that of the first row. These values represent the inverse square relationship between E and D. Students often ask the question, which equation should I use? After all, we have two of them. And the answer is probably to ask a different question. Ask, what do these two equations mean so that when you have a problem, you'll know which one to use? The first equation expresses the electric field in terms of how it is measured. It is measured by a test charge and measuring the force on that test charge. The second equation expresses the electric field in terms of the two variables that affect it, the Q of the source and the distance you are from the source. So if you get a question that looks something like this, a 5.0 microcoulomb charge experiences a 0.00025 newton force, a distance 35, 35 centimeters from a source, determine E, you think about what the equations mean. Here we have a force on a charge. And so what they've told us is they've told us information that is like that of the first equation. You're going to use this equation here because the Q given there is the quantity of charge on the test charge that's experiencing the force. Here's a second example. Determine the E value of a, at a distance of 35 centimeters from a 0 0.0040 coulomb charge. Here, this is the source charge, the quantity of charge on the source. It's creating an electric field and we want to know its value some distance from it. And so we're going to use this equation and the Q source is the, uh, is the 0 0.0040 Coulomb's charge and the distance is 35 centimeters or 0.35 meters. Electric field is a vector quantity and like any vector quantity it is fully described by two things a numerical value sometimes called a magnitude and a direction. So we need a rule to describe the uh, direction of the electric field vector. So by definition, the direction of the electric field at any given location around a source charge is the direction that a positive test charge would be pushed or pulled when placed at that location. By logical extension, we could therefore say that the electric field vector is always directed towards negative source charges and away from positive source charges. 
Oftentimes, the electric field at a given location is the combined result of the individual electric field vectors of two different source charges. As a for example, consider source 1 and source 2 and suppose we're asked to determine the electric field at a location midway between these two sources. If we were to do that, we would first determine the electric field as created by source 1. We'd use an equation and calculate it and we would recognize that it's directed towards source 1 since source 1 is negatively charged. Then we would use a new set of equations to calculate the electric field created by source 2 at this location, and because source 2 is positive, that electric field would also be directed to the left, away from the positive test charge. Once we determine these two electric field vectors, the net electric field would be the result of adding these two vector quantities together as vectors in order to determine the net electric field at this particular midpoint between the two sources. It's at this time in every video I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here's four resources. Each one of them can be found on our website, and you'll find links to each one of them in the description section of this video. You have a concept builder, a Minds on Physics mission, a set of calculator pad problems, and a tutorial page. Any one of these things could help make the learning stick. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. My name is Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.